With this special magic wand, I have the ability to scan targets and environments in one round. As these three cameras are able to scan areas from three different heights at once. But what kind of a result can this scanning stick achieve? And is it even possible to produce 3D Gaussian splatting model with three different cameras? Let me show you. Hello again boys and girls, I'm back with the new 3D scanning experiments. And this time I wanted to try out in practice what kind of a Gaussian splatting model I could train from footage that was shot simultaneously with three different angles. Based on my previous experiments and simulations that I have done on pre-rendered 3D images from Blender, I have noticed that in order to achieve a good 3D Gaussian splatting model, it is important that the location or object is scanned from at least three different heights. We need a high angle of view that points slightly downwards. We also need an angle from mid-height looking straight ahead, as well as the angle of view from low, which correspondingly looks slightly upwards. With this number of angles, we get enough coverage for the image material from which we can then train a good quality Gaussian splatting model. Of course, all these angles can also be scanned with one camera, but it takes time and you have to go around again and again and record the place three different times. So I was interested in building a solution where the target could be scanned efficiently at once in one round by using three different cameras. As a base of this rig, I used two selfie stick that I tightened together with a small screw like this. In recent years, I have collected various action and special cameras, and what they have in common is a smart and compact size, and the fact that they have relatively wide lenses. So for this task, I of course chose my beloved Insta360 camera, which I decided to set to capture the highest angle of view. In addition to this, I also decided to use the DJI Action 2 camera. This camera has a very good image quality and wide field of view for shots a small size. It is capable of shooting 4K in 60 frames per second and its clever magnetic attachment system makes it convenient to attach it many different places. But then for the third camera angle, I decided to use my latest action camera, which is this new Insta Go 3S model. Go 3 is a very special camera and it has this so-called action pod from which you can detach the rather small camera units itself. In this way, the small screen in the action board can be used as a remote monitor, in which case the actual camera can be easily placed down on the side of the scanner stick, and the small screen can be placed beside the mid cam to monitor how the low angle looks like. I really like this small Go 3 camera, and it has the same kind of a magnetic mounting system as the DJI Action 2 camera has. So it has very versatile ways to mount it almost anywhere. The Go 3 camera comes with this fun clip attachment part, which is mainly used with the brim of a hat or a cap. But I decided to utilize it in my stick scanner with these 3D printed parts that makes it easy for me to clamp this camera to the side of the selfie stick at any distance. We also need various clamping jaws and few ball head arms with which the medium height camera and the Go3 action part monitor can be easily attached to the center of the selfie sticks. 
And with this strange looking magic wand, I decided to go scan my first target. I chose this old airplane because it was just the right size and big enough for this type of scanning job. Of course, the handles of the selfie sticks had to be pulled out as far as they would go in order to create enough distance between the angles. The top 360 camera had to be launched to record video first, and after that I set the rest of the cameras to record. And while this setup was running, I walked around the plane quite calmly. During the round I mainly focused on following the aiming of the middle and lower camera angles from the small monitors. And I didn't have to worry about the 360 camera, because from up high it can see all around, and I can easily align the directions afterwards. Making one round only took about a minute and a half, and during that time I was able to efficiently record scanning material from three camera angles in one go. I would say that is quite fast and convenient. After scanning the material must of course be transferred to the computer, which can be a bit tedious when using three different camera systems. Mostly these cameras have the possibility to store the recordings on the SD card. But the GO3 camera has an internal memory and it must be in place in the action part, which is then connected to the computer with a USB-C cable. At the beginning of the scan I made setting that all these cameras record video with a 4x3 aspect ratio. DJI Action 2 material does not need much post-processing, it is usable as it is, but GO3 and 360 degree material must still be processed through the Insta360 Studio program. When shooting in free frame mode, the GO3 records a very wide image, but it is basically distorted at the edges. The Insta360 Studio has a mega view option that can be used to correct image distortions. For the 360 degree image, I also make settings where I correct lens distortions and set the keyframes where the airplane stays in the middle of the view. Then I rendered these videos out as an MP4 video file using 1000. 440 by 1080 resolution. That is enough to calculate the Gaussian models. And in this way I now have video clips that are ready for the actual Gaussian splatting training. And once again I used the postcard program to compute the Gaussian splatting model locally. But for the sake of comparison, I decided to also upload the same material to the Luma AI service to see if it's able to produce model from the material shot with different cameras. The current version of PostShot introduced a new processing method called MCMC, which should increase the fidelity of outputs across the board. MCMC comes from the name Markov chain and Monte Carlo, which are old mathematical methods based on random sampling and which can now be used creatively in the optimization of Gaussian models. This is a very interesting new topic and I might make a separate video about it later, but in the practice it gives us now a new setting value in the postcard which allows us to specify with the maximum values how many splats will be calculated in the end. I have noticed that this new method produces a better point cloud in the camera tracking phase and reduces the number of floating artifacts. Although draining now takes a little longer than the previous method, the model will be cleaner and more compact in the terms of file size. And at least this new method seems to be able to produce a 3D Gaussian splatting model in postcard of this material even though it was scanned with three different devices. 
I wish the same could be said about the model that Lumae I produced. But unfortunately the training process did not create very good looking Gaussian model here this time. In general the shape of the airplane is preserved, but then there are terrible overlaps in its structure and it seems that Luma AI's process doesn't know how to receive material with three different angles that well and it creates structural errors in the model. But overall I think this was an interesting and successful experiment. It means that the simultaneously recorded camera angles can be used in Gaussian draining using the postcard program and thus I can continue my scans with this magic wand. What do you think? Do you have experience of 3D scanning with multiple cameras? Leave a comment below and if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and as usual I will continue tinkering with my experiments. Until the next time, thanks for watching.